Well, if you click this link, there's one of two things. You're either curious about the ISO, the low light performance of the R10, or you just picked one up and you really want to know how far you can push it. Well, that's what we're going to cover in today's video. The R10 has a different sensor than the R7 and the R5. And why is the sensor important? Uh, they all have the same processor, means how they're going to process the information, but the sensor is how it captures the information. And by that, it affects the one thing we're going to look at today, which is the low light high ISO. For the first thing it's going to affect is how your ISO performance is on that sensor. The next thing it's going to affect your image quality, and it's also going to affect your readout speed. The latter two we'll cover in the full review that will come out in a week or so of this camera for everything about it. We'll go through the whole camera and we'll cover those subjects. But the low light ISO I wanted to cover in its own video because to me for wildlife it's much more important. And that's what we're going to do today. All the images that I've captured here were raw and I ran it just like my editing workflow video which you can go watch. And I ran them all through DxO Pure Raw. That's my first process. So everything in here is going to be a DNG file processed through Pure Raw. Okay, a DNG is just a raw file with a different format. Instead of you know, it's a CR3 for Canon, but it's a DNG once you get done with it. But it's still a raw file. It has all the color information still in there. Uh, so that's the baseline of all these images. So just so you don't know, so you don't get confused and going, why is these look different if you're zooming in and looking at the settings on the camera? All right. So let's get started, and we're going to start off at 6400 ISO. All right, so the first image here, I was using this image here. I'm using the 7200 lens EF adapted, and I'm shooting wide open at 2.8, and I'm shooting at 6400, and I'm shooting pretty fast at 1.800th of a second. So now this image actually is in golden hour, so you're going to capture a little better definition of contrast and colors. And this one, of course, I'm hugging the left. You look at that histogram. I'm I'm a roll of bad about that. I love hugging the left because it gives more golden colors. Left I have to do when I come out. Now the problem is if you're pushing high ISO and you're pushing to the left, I'm leaving myself very little room to brighten the image if I need to. If it's higher ISO at 6400, I'm not worried about. It. I can bump it up to a little bit more. But if you're shooting high ISO, be really careful with what I did here. Don't push your histogram too far to the left. All right. Let's look at the image. So as we're jumping in here, I'm only going 66%. Let's go ahead and go to one to one here, 100. This image, to me, looks phenomenal. I see almost no noise in it. The one place we're going to be looking on these foxes, all right? We'll be looking right in here. So in these shoulders, there's a lot of under fur here. And this is where I really will see where the image will fall apart and you'll get noise. And if you look right in here, you may not be able to see it if you're looking on a phone, but if you've got this on your laptop or tablet or computer, you will notice we're seeing some fall apart in here, right in that little area at 6400, but small. And if you look at the image like this one, I would, wouldn't crop it much more. Uh, this image can be great. Look at those eyes. They are crisp and sharp. Very, very good. Uh, the image looks good. Of course, we've fallen off out here, so we're losing that's fine. That's what we expect to see because our focal plane is hitting a little bit of this tree, a little bit of that limb, and her face because I'm focused right on her eye. The camera hit well. The focus hit well. So it's a little bit of focus there for you. Let's go see what else we've got here. All right. I got two images in here that's 6400. This again is a gold hour, golden hour. Now I'm using a different lens here. This is a different day. This is the prior day. And I'm shooting the 100 to 500 lens here. So with the two lenses you're going to see in this, actually you probably see three, uh, maybe. Uh, it's a 1 to 500 lens, the RF, and I'm shooting the EF 7200. So it's the two lenses I'm using. So you'll see them bounce back and forth. This time I'm shooting, and it's golden hour, I'm shooting at 1 3 20th of a second. I'm shooting a lot slower than I want to shoot on this girl. And I'm at 6400 ISO, and I'm about almost 300 millimeters out on that lens. So let's look at this one. So you see right now where we've got good, we're still to the left, but we're we're looking good here. You know, this is usually where I'll shoot, but I'll, a lot of times I will hug farther than left, but I usually don't shoot much more than middle. Unless I'm trying to hike you in the winter and I may shoot farther right. But anyway, let's look at her eye. Well, let's look right off the bat. That eye is tack sharp. It's good. We'll look at the noise out here. There's a little bit of noise. Um, and then we're going to look at this shoulder here. Remember I told you this shoulder is where I'll see them fall apart. Now, one thing we've got 
as you'll see, the face, the head, and the front legs are in focus. Everything here else is falling off like I want it to. I'd love to have, I want the fall off if they're facing away from me. That's exactly what I want. So we'll look at the shoulder, and the shoulder looks pretty good because this is all fall off faded. We'll look a little in here. There's a little bit of noise in here, but you know what? I, I think the, it looks good. Now, again, we're not critiquing the shot. We're critiquing the ISO and the low light performance. Like I said, this is right at golden hour. Because uh, I'm shooting one 320th at 5.6 and 6400, you know, I'm pushing it a little higher. All right, see what else we got here. There's one other image I had here at 6400. Um, this is exactly the same thing, same lens. Um, I'm shooting all the way out at 500 millimeters on this one. And I'm at 7.1 this time. And I'm still shooting at 320th of a second. So I'm amazed I got anything because this little girl is in these shots is running. She just kind of stopped. And... Uh, you know what? Uh, it's tack sharp on the eyes. That eye is beautiful. I love when I get glisten in an eye, especially this fox. And at 320 second, she's not moving her eye, which is lucky. Uh, we will look here in the ear, and we do see some softness, but that is not, it's fall off a little bit, but it's not bad. Everything in here looks good. The feet look good, because that's their focal plane. Even the rocks look good. Let's look here at the grain. A little bit of grain in here, see so it's soft, but that's not no. That's the noise I like. I like noise because there's times I've said before, I will reintroduce noise into my picture. But as far as the main focus of this picture, right? It's gonna be the head. Everything looks good. We got noise. We can see noise in here at 6400, but it's not. It's good noise. It's noise I like. So I think at 6400, and the reason I'm not going below 6400. As we know, everything below 6400 is going to be fine. These, this image looks good. At 5,000 lower, you're, you're golden. So I think so far with this camera, I'm okay with shooting at 6400 ISOs. Let's look at 5,000 ISO. A second ago, I mentioned that you know 5,000 lower, we look good. But here's a couple, two 5,000 ISO images. So just so you can see for yourself that it looks pretty good. Let's look at this image. Um, she just creeped over this log. She's going behind the grass. And right off the bat, the eye looks pretty good. Um, I'm shooting through some stuff here. That's why it's a little bit. Of, you'll see here it's uh, falling off. But, you know, this is more of a focus issue than anything. Because you'll look here. The grass is hit. And there's a tricky shot to get her here. And I think what we're hitting is... Just a touch in front of that. That eye still looks good. Um, but you'll see this is all fall off. And this is using the 7200 at, at 2.8. So that makes sense while we're falling off right here. We're on this eye and along this focal point. So everything else that she's facing away from us. Or sorry, body's facing away from us. All that's falling off. And that's what we want. That's the way we're shooting this wide open and that far out on this compression. That's what we want to see. Right, that looks good. Let's look at the other one. This is another 5,000 ISO. This is tighter in. That looks great. Um, now, see how small she is in the frame? So the more you start peeking in, because remember, this camera is 24 megapixels as opposed to 32 on the R7 or 45 on the R5. So what we're going to notice is uh, the farther you creep in, so if we jump out here to 200 just for giggles, You'll see you start to see a little more noise in here because we're way in. We're pixel peeping. We should see a lot of noise because it always exists. But a one-to-one, -one, it looks good. Everything looks great in this picture. Um, at one-to-one, -one, the noise is almost negligible. What you're seeing here is just distance where it's just, you know, the focal plane's here, farther out, tighter focal plane. And everything else here is falling off, but it looks great. The blacks look good. The colors look good. So what's good at 5,000? All right, guys, let's look at 8,000 ISO. Uh, this lens is the 7200 at 28, wide open again. We're shooting 1 1,000 a second, and we're at 8,000 ISO. Uh, out here at the image, looks good. We zoom in. Now, look what I did here. Pushing all up against that, blowing out. There are darks that are gone, but again, when she's tight to these, you know, these cedars and stuff, these pines, I always like to push that as hard as I can because I know... I don't think I'm going to lose on her, maybe a little bit of her feet, which is fine, in the blacks. But I want all this black in the dark, right? so I don't see that stuff behind. Image looks pretty good. Um, I'm seeing noise in here in this one. But again, it's because there's no light out here. Let's go to the next one. 
and it looks okay. I'm seeing noise in here, but I should see noise because she's small in the frame. Again, we're 24 megapixels. We're not at 32 to 45 where we can do this one-to-one -one and we don't see noise. And that's more because we're getting really tight in those pixels, but it looks still looks pretty good to me at 8,000 ISO. Let's look at two more that were in gold hour, golden hour. And this is where you see the difference. Where I talked about these here are both in blue hour. Going into gold, this is golden hour. Let's look at her. You notice now we don't have as much. Now we do see right here at 8,000, I'm gonna talk about the shoulders. You're starting to see that where it's, it's falling apart. Now again, this is the uh, two eight wide open, so it will fall apart faster going this direction away from her because our focal plane's right in this area, right on her head because it's locking on the eye. And it's amazing it didn't hit that stick in front of her eye, but it grabbed her eye. And her shoulders are soft, but that's a combination of things. One is high, the ISO at 8,000. The second thing is the fall off from the focal plane. Let's look at the next image. These are all right next to each other. And again, it looks good. Her face looks good, her eye looks good, her nose looks good, a little bit of noise in here. Uh, touch of noise, you can see it here and here and there. So 8,000 is okay. Um, if you're gonna use it again, uh, probably you're not, you're probably gonna be, so that's a 50% crop of the image right here. And I can see us doing that to maybe 66% of the image left. Uh, and it still looks good, right? We keep looking at this, where I keep looking at this, it's probably my mistake, at 24 megapixels, I'm looking at it one to one, 100% in. So I'm just gonna see more than I normally should see. Uh, if you're having a crop in, if you look here in the top left, you're going in that tight on this thing, you can do this with the R5, but you're really, R7, you're pushing it doing that really bad. It's gonna be a small image. The R10 or the R3, it's not gonna look that good. So 8,000 ISO, I'm fine. Again, let's look at these again real quick. Blue light, those two, and you go to golden light. Exact same settings, 1,000, exact same settings. 2.8, 1,000 a second, 8,000 ISO, and that's the difference in the light, the type of light you're getting. All right, let's look at the other folder real quick. See if I've got anything in here that is at 8,000 ISO. Okay, what do we got here? Yes, I do have two of them. All right, this is cool too. This is the one of the male foxes on that second day. And he is at 8,000 ISO. He is using the 100 to 500 lens at 5.6, excuse me, at 8,000 ISO. So we're shooting a higher or more closed off aperture on this one. And this is in golden hour. You can kind of really tell by the grass and stuff. All right, let's jump in here and look. Okay, his face looks great. Looks great. Ears, a little bit of noise there, a little bit of noise there. Shoulders are falling off, but you know, a little bit, not a lot. His legs look good. That's motion blur here. I'm at one five hundredth of a second, so I'm shooting a lot slower with the one to five hundred because I've got to shoot a higher aperture. When I'm using that 2.8, I, I've got a lot more light than the five, six, or seven one, so I remember that. So I have to shoot slower. Uh, everything looks great on this. At 8,000 ISO, he looks good. His eyes look great. He has kind of milky eyes, really different head. Uh, but you'll see a little bit of fall off here. Let's look at the other image. Same, just a little, just a few seconds after that. Again, that face is what I'm, I'm really focused on. Looks good. You'll see here. See the little bit of noise here in that shoulders. That's where it's always looks soft, no matter what you do. Little noise here, look out here, we see noise. But again, I, I think it's all good noise. I, I like everything in this. Uh, it looks good. Um, it's the noise I'd expect to see at 8,000 ISO normally. Um, so let's move on. Let's go find us a 10,000 ISO. All right, these are all 10,000. These again are with the 100 to 500 lens, remember that. And so we're shooting at about 6.3, looks like all of them are 6.3 at 10,000 ISO at 1 500 second. So let's look at them. All right, blue hour. So we're before, I mean, this is actually prior to blue hour. This is really bad. Um, so we're at 10,000 ISO. Let's zoom in here. Again, we're one to one. We're tighter than we're gonna ever crop. And what we're seeing, we're seeing more noise it's really amazing jump for 8,000, 10,000. We're seeing a lot more noise. 
the image is, I would say I couldn't use this one, even if it was a good whatever it was, because I need I would need to bring the because she way she's facing me is in that what little light was over in this direction, not this direction, so her face is in the shadow. And you can see there's noise in here, motion blur. If I tried to recover it, it would look horrible. It'd be it would be real purple, probably magenta. I wouldn't be able to recover it. Uh, let's go to the next image. This is just same, just a little bit after that. Now what you'll notice is, see the sun's over here in her butt on the back side over here. And I go to the next image, it's getting a lot more on her head. See the light there. But what we're going to see is we have motion blur here. I just thought that was a cute image of her splintered eyes. So I have motion blur in the head. So I have two things going on. I got noise plus motion blur, which makes it kind of hard to do. Her legs, not too bad, but everything's motion blur. Um, so what, what we're looking to look for though, we're looking at the noise and it's looking pretty rough in these two pictures. Let's go move on. So now we're, she's got a little more light on her, uh, a little better focus, a little less motion blur here. So that's motion blur because she was trotting towards me and I'm shooting one four hundred of a second. So it's really hard to stop the motion because you can see it in this picture, the motion blur. This one, a uh, little better. Uh, but what we're seeing, we're seeing the noise in here. We're seeing the noise in here and the shadows real bad. Uh, we have a glint in the eye, but it's still not really tack sharp. Her feet are pretty sharp, but they're blacks. But uh, this may be a little more of a focus issue than the noise issue. But the noise is, is a lot there. Now, I think I couldn't live without, well, live with, excuse me. Uh, let's go to the next one. So this one's about 20 minutes later, it looks like. Yeah, about 20 minutes later. So we're in the golden hour, exact same settings, right? We're at 6.3, one, now I actually was shooting a little faster shutter speed, one 500, so it was one 400th minute ago, one 500th now. And what we see is uh, a little better because the light's better. But what we're seeing here, if you look here, you see the noise in here. Now it's not hurting anything because it's a little bit of fall off. Uh, and this is a little noise in here, the eyes are, Sharp, the noise is not messing with us, not messing with us here. Get to the shoulders. We're not talking about these shoulders. This is fall off, but there's also, we're seeing more noise. So after looking at 10,000 ISO, my verdict is this may be the peak where we can go. Uh, we'll have to look at the 12,800. And again, if you're shooting with a lot of light. You've got a good sunny day and it's going to golden hour. You're going to get a little better with shooting these higher ISOs and because you can probably shoot a faster shutter speed and and uh, other things you can affect and affect the noise. Um, but I think we're, we're capping this camera at uh, 10,000. All right, let's move over to 12,800. I tend to took a lot more pictures that were in the 12 to 16 to 20,000 than I did anything else in 10,000. Um, because what I noticed real quick, look at the pictures in the back of the camera, I could see the difference in the fall off. So we're going to look at a horrible case. So this is the first one we're going to look at, and this is the most extreme case of trying to shoot. I shouldn't even take in this picture, but she just ran down the road. I sat down close to that concrete. She just looked at me and walked around. So I had to snap some pictures, but these are at 1 1 25th a second at f8 because i'm using the 1 to 500 i had really not much else choice and uh it's dark yeah i shouldn't even take in the picture it's dark dark and this is what you get and it's just so dark there's no light so it just it, everything just washed out on her so it's nothing to view there but that's the extreme uh you still take the picture you can still maybe play with it for something but i don't think you could ever use it Let's move on. Um, about the same conditions, um, but it's a little tighter. She's closer to me. And what we're going to see here, let's look here. Um, like I said, there's no light. There's no light whatsoever. Look at the noise we've got in here. It, it's not horrible. It, this picture's underexposed. You know, I could have pushed it to 16,000 or 1 320th. I'm just getting so slow. Because uh, it's amazing it was this sharp as it was as far as no motion blur. But you'll see here, there's just no definition in this area. Let's move on. Let's go to the next image. I just thought this was cute. I wish it was a better light where I could have got a better picture, but I could probably still do something with that and play with it a little bit and get artistic with it. But I just liked her looking up. Pretty cute. There's some trees you can see in her eye. 
Uh, but the, uh, you know, here this this ears falling off. Um, you know, it's just how dark it is under here. It's not much you can do there. Let's move to the next one. Uh, conditions are almost the same. We're, we're just in blue hour here. And what we'll see here at 12,800, a lot of noise. Like I said, we process their DNZ, the, the DXO Pure Raw, and it's just a lot of noise. This noise out here doesn't look bad, but what you're seeing is it's just it's just washing all this out. It's just too soft and everything. There's just no light whatsoever there. The next one, um, this is starting to, in blue hour, and we're at 12,800. Now, here's what I was talking about the shoulders a while ago. If you look right here, look how soft that is. It's just, it's just blur, fuzz. Our eyes look okay. And again, we would probably barely, if that, we'd be cropping into here. And at that, for 24 megapixels, that's about as far as I would want to crop in at 24. If you went into 66% here, you could probably still crop in. It doesn't look bad, um, but it you can see that noise in there. And like I said, we're looking at this at one-to-one -one just to really look at the noise and pixel peep. But what you're seeing is the noise at 12,800 is pretty, pretty severe. It doesn't look bad in here, but when you start looking at the animal and their fur, you'll start to see things like this where it's going to start dissipating. Same spot, same image. Uh, not the same image, but the next image over from that one. Uh, same thing. The eyes look a little, a little better because you got a little more eye. But that's about the same. A little tongue sticking out. And the next image is the same one in that little series. Again, it's all, you know, she's sideways, so this she's completely in the focal plane. And you can see that, you know, this fur looks good, this fur looks good, but it's always in these shoulders where it gets into not as uh, coarse hair, softer hair, and that's where you'll see it fall apart and the ears inside. All right, let's go into a little better light. Um, this is the male fox, 12,800, same thing, same lens, 320th second. So let's look at the head first. Head looks good. Um, you can see some of the noise in here on this side in the dark where there's no light. It's falling apart. There's the shoulder again. Look how blurry and fuzzy. Even back here, there's softer fur. Um, not so good. Uh, bird with feathers. Um, you won't see this as much. It'll be more like what these areas are. So uh, your mileage may vary. Um, let's go into the next image for her. Like I said, I had more 12,800, but that's really good because this is where we're going to see how it's falling apart. Uh, we're into golden hour now, so it, it, you know you zoom out at 100 percent, or you know the the full image. It looks good, right? So Instagram things like that, you're shooting the animal full frame, or not full frame, but you're shooting it covering the whole frame. It looks good. Zoom in, same thing. With the light, the colors look a little better, and you, again we're brighter, so I could adjust this to drop some things and maybe clean her up a little bit, but. What we're seeing is down here looks great. The pavement looks great. But once we get up in this fur, we'll see where it starts falling apart, the softer fur. But this this is not bad. So this one was a really good usable image, I think. It's it's a thick stream. Let's go to the next one. I love when I can get low with her on these paths and stuff like this. Looks good. Get this blur of the concrete. A little bit of leaves right now. It's completely covered in yellow leaves. All right, let's look at her face. Again, her feet, so, you know, her, her eyes and those feet are about in the same focal plane. They look good. You can see the claws, toenails, whatever, a little grass. Hitting her face, <clears throat> looks pretty good. Of course, she's really dirty in that chest. Um, this is, you know, kind of falling out, which we expect to see. We're at F8, though. It shouldn't fall out that much because the back legs don't look too bad. Uh, but you can just see this the softness in here around the, the nose and the cheeks. This side not as bad. The head looks good. But, but again, um, you know, we're pixel peeping. Let's go 50%. You know, it still looks good at 50%. It's just when we jump in one-to-one, -one, we can really see where it falls apart. So at 12,800, I think still we're good. Let's go to the next image. Same thing. Just turned her head. That's all. Again, it looks really good to me. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of noise. You can see a lot of noise, but it's not bad. It looks good. Here is the same thing. We're lot, the light's getting better, right? So we're getting into full golden hour. And what you'll notice is <clears throat> the face looks good. The eyes look better because we've got more light to reflect off those eyes. But again, what you can see is in these areas along the nose where there's tighter fur, not as long and coarse fur. We're seeing some noise. Get into this area. See the noise now? 
like I said, you'll see this if you watch this on your laptop or your TV, on your phone, it's going to be harder to see this. But there's noise in here. Again, it's not horrible. It's not bad. Because we're one-to-one. -one. You look out here, you almost can't see it. Probably fix that up a little bit of sharpening D noise a little bit more if you need to. So at full golden hour, this 12,800 is fairly usable. Let's keep moving on. This is, um, she's moved in some shadows. That's all this is. She's out in the open where there's light. She got in the shadows. Here, like I said, getting the shadows. It just looks like it falls apart a little bit here. I hugged this so hard to the left again. What I was trying to do in this picture, I was trying to make this where it just blows out. I knew it could recover her a little bit. But in this instance, we'd already been at its edge of where I would say the usable noise levels for my comfort is. This is as far as I would go. This image, if I had to brighten her up any, it would take a lot of work because you already see there's noise all out in here. So it, this was uh, would be a mistake if I was really wanting a good image on this image because look how hard I'm hugging that to the left. But again, I was doing it because I wanted to blow this out and I could have done it in post instead. All right, so we're with our little male fox again. I think it's a male fox. I don't know, it could be a female, but I think it's a male. Let's look at his face. Uh, same settings, everything's the same. We're at 640, we're shooting a little bit faster. 40 second, um, still 12,800. And we're looking here. Like I said, his eyes look gorgeous. His nose, you see a little, you know, you're seeing some loss of detail in the mouth. You see here in the ears, we're getting the noise. And here in the shoulders, we're seeing that noise pretty bad. Looking out here, this this background noise, I, I like it actually. I kind of prefer that. But in here, this is this is acceptable, but it's, uh, it's pushing it. Now, that's about as worse as noise I'd want to see. Uh, one more of him. Um, like I said, this is golden hour. This is, uh, yeah, 734, those dark ones. Yeah, they're about 30 minutes after that, those very first images. How quick it'll move across from blue and before blue. Again, I just love when they stick their tongues out. There's, I guess these called these Monday pictures or something. Look at here, we see a little noise in that side of the eye. The eye looks good. We've got a little bit of motion blur because I'm shooting at 640 per second. Um, Ear looks better than the other ones had been with the noise. A little more there. A little noise here. Got, we've actually got detail this time in the mouth and the shoulders falling out. But the whole, everything's falling out here because of focal plane because I'm hitting his head. So his feet ought to be, yeah, his feet are pretty good. So is a leaf. It's, it's not bad. Last of those, think, nope, nope, we got to look at the two eights. Give me a second here. All right, it looks like I don't have any more of the higher ISOs on the two eight lens. So we're going to move back over here to the RF 100 to 500 lens. We're going to start looking at these. So let me get this set. Let's look at 16,000 ISO. Um, 12,000 ISO being pretty rough. I'm scared to look at 16,000 ISO. And I can tell if this was taken during the blue hour. So let's look at it real quick. And we're looking here. Not as bad as I thought. Uh, that's a lot of motion blur. Look at the legs. I'm shooting at uh, 1 250 the second, so, and she's trotting. And the head's not as bad as far as motion blur that goes, but as far as the noise goes, it's, it's pretty rough. Um, it's really soft in here, really soft in here. I did not hug the left this time, which is really good, uh, but I'm still left of center, and I'm still at 16,000 ISO in that slow shutter speed, and it's not bad. It, looking at the whole picture uh, a little dark and uh, we zoom in though we can see there's not a whole lot because we'd have to bring these this uh, up as far as the shadows and stuff and we're going to see a lot of noise a lot more noise once we do that this noise in here is I, actually it's pretty noise i actually like that type of noise it's kind of pretty uh, makes the bokeh look kind of interesting but uh, on the face um, the definition of the mouth uh, the eyes. Um, this doesn't look horrible here, but it's still pretty dark. So 16,000, um, maybe with better light, it would uh, look better at this high so, but I, I doubt it. Let's go ahead and bump it up to 20,000 ISO. I'm not looking forward to this. Um, we know it. 12,800 is pretty rough. 16,000 is pretty rough. We can see these first pictures just lancing at them by the time of these pictures. Um, 657, that's really dark. Yeah, these are all blue hour pictures, so it's going to be pretty rough. Um, first one, 20,000. There's, there's no light. Look at this on this side. 
See how gray that light is? No yellow whatsoever. There's there's no light. This is dark. I should be taking the picture, but again, she's out here close to me, so I got to snap the picture. Um, she's not moving. This is not motion blur, even though I'm at one six hundred to one one hundred sixty ish. That's slow. I know a lot of you may like to shoot these real slow stutter speeds. I just don't. It just in the camera movement. It's, you know, you, you're gonna throw away more pictures you're gonna keep. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this is the extreme, guys. This is dark, dark, dark. Yeah, there's, there's, there's not a lot of detail in here. You can see it's completely, can't see any fur in this ear. It's just washed out. Let's move on. Oh, it's a cute picture. Um, got really low on the ground here. Got that barrel of the lens right next to that ground to get that little blur from the concrete because it's so close. And she's nice little pose. Actually, I got the composition right, but it's just too dark. Um, look at that. Um, this is not blown out of the darks, but it's it's hugging it. It blew out up here, but see the reds are brighter. But yeah, I don't know if I could. I do things for Instagram with this. I probably could, but it had to be like this. Had to be full. You can't crop in at all in this picture. Let's move on. Same thing. Uh, we got motion blur in here. You see how that is here. Uh, that's actually focus plane, my bad. Just enough in front for that eye. It, uh, but yeah, look here. It's just, there's no definition of the mouth, none here. But again, we're zooming in too much. Out here, it's not great, but it's maybe an Instagram post, if that. Uh, same thing, same time. Look at the, all the noise in the eye. Noise here all that you know you can barely make out for but again we're creeping in way too hard let's do our 66 percent look at it not bad here but you can still see it it's just no definition in here you could almost not make out if this ear wasn't black it was red it would look the same color as that it would it just blend right in there um so nothing there let's move on uh same thing you can see the eyes, but it's just, and I'm not, I'm crushing it pretty bad left, but I'm not crushing as bad as I used to do. If I was in here, it still wouldn't help. It's just too dark, those eyes, because I'd have to try to recover these eyes and this face, and there's nothing to work with at this level. It's going to get too noisy. Shoulders are just nothing. You can't see anything in there. Uh, you see the fur here, and same focal plane again, because again, she's standing sideways, so this is all in focus. But where the, it's coarser, doesn't look as bad. When you get into this soft fur, it's just gone. Again, a bird, it wouldn't look so bad with the feathers. As long as it's got feather feathers, you know, your side, wing feather, tail feathers. But if you had any softer feathers, you're going to see the same stuff like that. Jump ahead. I'm really sad this was dark because I think this is a cute picture. I like the, the fall red that's turning here. Dark behind her with the log. I think it's a pretty picture if it wasn't at 20,000 ISO. 200 of a second. So we a little mo little blur for me um, with the camera because it's so slow. But look at that. There's no definition in here and here. You've got the colors from this distance. But again, to make this work, you would have to do something like, even if you wanted to take the curve and give it a little more uh, brightness hit. See, it's just... Once you do that, all that noise is just, see how bad it's getting. Anything I try to recover, any exposure. See, it's just, it's just, when you get out here, maybe you could do something with it with, you know, a little bit. Let's hit auto, see what it tries to do. And it's just horrible. Yeah, it's just, there's nothing you can do with this. Just, you have to brighten it up and it's just, just too bad. All right, move on. Next picture. Yeah, there's nothing you can do with this image. It's just to 20,000 ISO. This 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 camera. It's just in the dark. Like so, this is blue hour, not golden hour. It's just falling apart. Um, here, same thing. Um, doesn't look as bad as the last image. Let me reset all that. Make sure it's reset. Okay, it's reset. So this is pretty bad. It's maybe a focus plus noise because you go to this next image. It looks a little better here. Than the last image so this is probably a focus issue on top of the yeah it's hitting over in here it's hitting in front of this it's trying to hit that nose and it lost focus again 
that's what I'll get into the full review on this camera about the uh, the focus. This is what it looks like here. These pictures are they're thir 13 seconds apart. And you'll see that here this focus is not as good. You go to the next and the focus is better. So look at the better focus one. You actually see a little bit of fur in the ears. Again, we're pixel peeping. I still would have to recover to get some light because this image is pretty dark. And this, there's no definition still here. It's just not here. But at this, I don't know if I could do anything with this to even salvage it for Instagram for a little small phone picture. Um, really sad because, again, these two pictures, I love this. You know, the red and a little bit of gold in here and the dark behind her. All right, last image we're going to look at. This is uh, in blue hour, um, not quite in the golden hour. Again, can you tell there's no yellow in this? Same settings. We're at 200 second. Sped it up a hair, <laughs> barely. And let's look at it. Um, yeah, look at that noise right in here in the nose. It's really bad. Um, shoulders is not as bad. You're seeing some definition in here. So this is not horrible. Uh, if you're shooting out this, you probably could do something with this image to recover it a little bit for Instagram posts, but you would not be able to print any of these at all. Um, that's as far as I'm going to go. I, there's no point with looking at these at 20,000 to go to 32,000. Uh, yeah. What's the verdict on the R10 now with the low light, high ISO capabilities? Well, it's a, it's a little rough. Um, anything above 8,000 is probably not printable. And I think anything above that, 10,000, 12, 800, is going to be social media only and have to be good light to get a good image out of it. I think where you want to stay with is 6,400 or lower for the best part of it. Looks like the images that were 6,400, 5,000 or less were really good in this, with this camera. Anything above that, pretty rough. Um, we should temper that a little bit by thinking about the DSLR days. The 5D Mark IV, if I got past 6,400, I was scared to use the images. I knew how bad the noise was going to be. I think you guys that had the 7D and the 90D were saying, you know, you could use some 10,000 images with some work. But most of the stuff, again, you wanted to be still in that below 6,400 ISO or 5,000 ISO with the 7D. Um, so really, it, it shouldn't be that bad for the price point this camera sits in and all the other features it has, it's still a really good bargain. Just don't expect to go out in blue hour and the early golden hour when it's an overcast day, especially like these were with the Fox. These days had no sun. It was just what sun was coming through when I called a golden hour was coming through the clouds and whatever was trying to rain was trying to happen. Um, but yeah, that's it guys. That's my opinion and my testing with this camera that it is not a low light monster like the other cameras have been, but it's still really usable and still pretty good. Uh, like, share, comment, all those fun things. And uh, there should be a link up here to the moose rut video I just did where the moose were in tussling. So if you'd like to see the moose rattling their antlers and pushing each other around and a uh, really cool sunset shot I got, go watch that video. Until the next time, you guys take care.